Yo, what is going on everyone? My name is Nick or The Notorious Fantasy and in today's video, we're going to be going in depth into my week number 11 must start and must sit wide receivers on the week. But before we could get on into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you do leave a like on today's video. It would help me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Twitter, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. And if you you have any questions about week number 11 of the 2022 fantasy football season doesn't even necessarily have to correlate with the wide receiver position please ask down below in the comment section or in our discord linked in the pinned comment and in the video description we're going to be talking about our sponsor DraftKings Sportsbook a little bit later so without further ado let's get into today's video we began with my must-start wide receivers headlined by Kadarius Toney of the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the Los Angeles Chargers in LA. Last week, up against the Jacksonville Jaguars, Tony finished the week as the wide receiver number 11 in half PPR, tied with his former teammate Darius Slayton. In that matchup, he had four receptions on five targets for 57 yards and a touchdown, as well as two rushes for 33 yards. His teammates are all on the injury report at the wide receiver position. McCall Hardman is banged up with an abdomen issue, and he also has a quote-unquote illness. MVS on the injury report with an illness, and Juju has a concussion. Shockingly, he's not also sick. So there's a lot of injuries going on around Kadarius Tony. and while I assume either McCall Hardman or MVS plays, I don't think Juju is going to end up playing, Kadarius Tony has now arisen to a spot where he is potentially the wide receiver number one on one of the best offenses in the National Football League, going up against a Chargers defense that has not been very good all year long to me. This seems like a humongous boom spot for Kadarius Tony again. He boomed last week, and honestly, I think he could do even better this week in prime time up against the LA Chargers. At number two, we have Cortland Sutton of the Denver Broncos going up against the Las Vegas Raiders at home in Denver. Last week, up against the Atlanta Titans, the Tennessee Titans in Tennessee, he was the wide receiver number 35 in half PPR, having six receptions on 11 targets for 66 yards. This take is assuming, I am assuming right now, that Jerry Judy misses the game. Because just like with Kadarius Toney, there are so many injuries to the wide receivers in Denver. So outside of Sutton and Dolchich, they don't really have anyone else to throw the ball to. So even if Mr. Unlimited has been a complete and utter unmitigated fucking disaster all year long, he is going to have to throw the ball to Cortland Sutton. And last time out, up against the Raiders in week number four was basically Sutton's best game on the year in fantasy football, having five receptions on seven targets for 52 yards and a touchdown. And you know how I talked about the Broncos being a disaster? There is only one other team in the NFL that is more of a disaster, in my opinion, than the Broncos, and that is their opponent, the Las Vegas Raiders. The Raiders are a complete and utter disaster, game in and game out. They lose to Jeff fucking Saturday last week. The Colts, Matt Ryan, who looked like he was in a fucking coffin, he hops out of the coffin like he's the Undertaker in the WWE and just beats the Raiders. The Raiders are a flaming sack of shit. Again, I know Cortland Sutton hasn't been great all year, but if there was ever a spot for him to have a big game, it would be up against the Los Vegas Raiders. My number three must-start wide receiver is Garrett Wilson of the New York Jumbo Jets going up against the New England Patriots in Foxborough. The Jets were on bye last week, so we have to go ahead and look towards week number nine, hop on in the time machine for Wilson's last game. In that matchup, up against the Buffalo Bills, where... Let's be honest with you. Everyone and their mother thought the Bills were going to win that game. The Jets win. Wide receiver 13 on the week and half PPR tied with A.J. Brown. Eight receptions on nine targets for 92 yards. One rush for seven yards and a touchdown. Last time out up against the Patriots just a couple of weeks ago in week number eight. Six receptions on seven targets for 115 yards. Now I know I like to poke fun at Zach Wilson, the mill hunter. Everyone likes to poke fun at him because the guy's been pretty ass all season long. But ultimately, Elijah Moore has been irrelevant. They need a number one weapon, especially without Brees Hall there. And Zach Wilson continues to force feed the rock down the throat of Garrett Wilson. Now I understand Nick 
on paper. This is an incredibly tough matchup. The Patriots defense is really good. This should be a low scoring game. And I agree. I do think this is going to be a run heavy, low scoring game. But when the Jets have to throw the ball, they are going to throw to one man and his name is Garrett Wilson. Before we get on into the rest of the wide receivers moving into the must-sit wide receivers, I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They've been on your screen this whole entire time. If you bet are a brand new user to DraftKings Sportsbook and bet $5 on any sport pregame money line, you receive $200 in free bets if your bet wins. Now, since your bet has to win, I think you guys should go over to college football where there are the biggest favorites. Now, obviously, upsets happen all the time, but I have two picks for you guys that I love this week in college football. Head on over to the college football tab on DraftKings. It's going to be on your screen right now. You're going to go on over to the college football tab, scroll down a little bit, and then you'll find Ohio State minus 6,000 at Maryland. Bet $5 on that. Win $200 in free bets if your bet wins. If you don't like Ohio State, maybe you're just not a fan of the team, then you can go ahead and scroll down a little bit further to Florida State versus Louisiana Lafayette minus 20. 400. Again, you have to be a brand new user to DraftKings Sportsbook to activate this offer. Click on the link in the video description or the pinned comment down below to activate your offer. If you have any questions about this, ask down below in the comment section or you can ask me on Twitter at Notorious. FNTSY. So now we move to the must-sit wide receivers, headlined by Allen Robinson of the LA Rams, going up against the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. Now I know what everyone is thinking. Nick Cooper Cup is out, so now it's time to play Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson has been so fucking bad this season that even now, in the perfect situation without Cooper Cup, I have zero confidence in Allen Robinson. If this was going into the season and you told me, Nick, in week 11, Allen Robinson is going to be the number one receiver on the Rams, I would have been dancing with glee. I would be so fucking excited. But based upon the resume that we've seen Allen Robinson put up in an LA Rams uniform, I have zero thoughts that are positive on this. Now, obviously, my I do technically have one positive thought. It's that he should be force-fed with targets. But will he be is the question. And will they even be accurate? Because Matthew Stafford has also been a disaster this season. Week 10 against the Rams. I know are up against the, the Cardinals. He's on the Rams. I know John Walford was playing in this game, but wide receiver 49, four receptions on six targets for 44 yards. And the Saints defense is also sneaky good this season and against the pass ranking fourth in the NFL in DVOA. So if Allen Robinson has a great game here, then I'll start to believe. Because it all makes sense as to why he would be good. But the fact is, he just hasn't been good this season. My number two must-sit wide receiver is Drizzy Drake London of the Atlanta Falcons going up against the Chicago Bears at home in Atlanta. Week 10 at Carolina, wide receiver 27 in half PPR. Five receptions on six targets for 38 yards and a touchdown. And that was his first touchdown scored since week number three. While this matchup seems very solid, the Bears defense is not the Bears defense from a couple of years ago. I frankly don't trust Drake London because of the fact that he just does not get the ball thrown at him accurately enough by Marcus Mariota. Again, on paper, just like with Allen Robinson, everything makes sense for this to be a boom game for Drizzy Drake London. But I would continue to push the fact that while I love Drake London the player, the situation is incredibly bad. So until I see some consistency out of Drake London, I just do not want him in my lineup. Final player to discuss is Gabe Davis of the Buffalo Bills going up against the Cleveland Browns at home in Buffalo. This take on him being a must sit is assuming that it is snowing during the game or that it's very windy. If this game is played in a neutral site, like they're saying it might be, then throw this take out the fucking window. But if this game is being played in Buffalo, in the wind, in the heavy snow, they're saying it might be seven feet of snow. You don't want anything to do with, or six feet of snow, you don't want anything to do with any of these Buffalo Bills receivers or Browns receivers. Wide receiver eight last week up against the Vikings, making a catch that wasn't actually a catch. Six receptions on 10 targets for 93 yards and a score. I love Gabe Davis. He is one of my favorite players going into the season, but everything as to why I don't like him, has to do with the fact that the weather really makes me nervous in 
Buffalo. So thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys thought about these players. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comment section. I love you guys all so much. I hope you all have a great rest of your guys' day. And as always, good boy!